Okay guys, welcome back. So it's induction day. I am so far behind on updating you guys. Things have been insane. It's Tuesday today. Um, so I have a long story, but it'll be in my birth story video um, about everything that happened because there's been like lots that has happened since the weekend. Um, but anyways, it is induction day. We're in the hospital. This is it, you guys. Last baby shot. I've been awake since 1.30 with contractions. So um, hopefully that's a good sign and that means that like I'm further dilated and phased. But we're just waiting for the doctor to come and then we're gonna see what our options are to start the induction process. So I'm eating, have to have Tim Hortons, of course. And um, we're just going to wait and see. Bryce just went down to um, to pay for our parking. So we're just in the triage room until we get everything going and then they'll move us to an actual room. They had me on the monitor already and I've been contracting. I don't wanna scroll because I don't know, I don't wanna touch, but I was having lots of contractions earlier, so. And that is literally about all that I have to update you guys on for the birth vlog so far is we're in triage to be induced, having contractions, and we're just gonna see what the doctor says, but let's, I'm, I'm excited to get this show on the road. I'm, I'm ready, so here we go. Okay, so um, we have a balloon inserted for induction. To see what that does and they it has increased my contractions like quite a bit um, I'm having mostly like back contractions actually but that's okay um, and then I have to be constantly monitored because of my platelet issue so I'm being constantly monitored and watched um, because I bleed so easily I'm still bleeding after they put the balloon in and it's been over an hour um an anesthesiologist has been in a couple times to take blood work to just investigate what is actually wrong with my platelets um and that's about it we haven't moved rooms yet i don't know if you can hear that but yeah we're still just waiting on a room um and that's about it for induction so far Nothing too crazy yet. How do you feel? Nervous. <laughs> and excited? Yes. On induction day? Mm-hmm. Because he's going to come? Sure. <laughs> okay, so we're in the official delivery room. I still have, I can actually hear somebody giving birth right now. Um, I still have the balloon in. Um, I'm having very intense cramping with loads of pressure. Hey guys, so as you can see by the last video that you watched, um, things got pretty intense very quickly for us. And so I have no more videos. So basically our whole plan to video the birth and share and keep our own memories, we don't have any of that. We do have some pictures. So I decided that this is gonna be a birth vlog slash like my birth story, I guess, since to like, there's no video, so I'll have to fill you in, but I do have pictures, so I'll insert those as we go. So I'm gonna start at the very beginning and hopefully I get all the information right. We'll see. So the Sunday night that is, um, I went into early labor. And so I filmed the video trying to induce my labor at the last um, part of the video is on the Sunday. So on the Sunday I went into labor and we went into the city 
And when we got there, I wasn't any more dilated, but I was 50% effaced. So stuff was happening and the doctor told us not to leave the city because he was pretty sure we'd be back that night. So we ended up staying at family's house it and my labor stopped. And so because we were being induced on Tuesday, we didn't want to drive two hours home and then have to come back on the same day because my labor started again or anything like that. So we spent all day Monday in the city trying to get labor to happen on its own and just kind of spent the day together. Tuesday comes around at 9 a.m. we got the phone call to come in and um, they were going to induce us. So we got to the hospital probably around 9, 30, 10, and we got put in a room in triage. We waited for quite a while before we were able to see a doctor. She was doing her own thing and that's totally fine, I understand. She came into the room around 11 o'clock and that's when we went through all the paperwork and everything. Because of my platelet levels, we ended up having, well, not we, I ended up having a boatload of blood work done. I spoke to our anesthesiologist quite a few times. Um, they were just trying to figure out what was going on with my platelets. Was I producing enough, but they weren't working? Was I not producing enough? Like what was going on? Um, so I had a lot of blood work done, but at the, when the doctor came in, because I was only one centimeter dilated, they had to use the balloon to induce me. I'll put a picture up here if I can find one. If you've been induced with the balloon, you know what it is. It's basically just a hose that gets inserted up and filled with water till you dilate to a certain amount. The balloon was inserted at 1220 or 1225 or something like that in the afternoon on the Tuesday and we kind of went from there. But my bleeding issue got really scary with the balloon. I wasn't able to stand up without losing a lot of blood, like a lot, a lot, a scary amount of blood that I would lose. And so we were very concerned with that, but they thought maybe we'll check you. So they checked me and it turns out that the balloon was put too high up. So they moved it down in hopes that that would kind of help with the bleeding. Meanwhile, I'm getting more blood taken. We're still in triage waiting for our labor room. Around 2.30ish, um, a doctor came or a nurse came and they moved us to a labor and delivery room. And that was the very last video there. I was going to give you guys a tour of the room, but like I said, things got a little intense. So we got to the room and they, she was like, well, I'll get all your information and we'll talk about stuff. So that's what we did. And then she suggested that I have a bath to try and help with the contractions since they were fairly intense and I was still hadn't lost the balloon, which is what's supposed to happen. It's supposed to fall out. So I went to the tub and when I went to get out of the tub, things got pretty hectic. Um, I was in a world of pain. I was losing a lot of blood. I was not feeling very well. I just, overall, it was just not good. So the nurse checked and she was like, oh, well, this is normal, it's fine, and then left because it was shift change. Meanwhile, I'm still losing a lot of blood, I'm still in a lot of pain, and nothing's going well, basically. So eventually, we decide to ring the bell because I was like, this balloon has got to come out, like I'm losing way too much blood, like this is just not right. I talked to a few people in the meantime that had been induced with the balloon and like this amount of bleeding is so not normal. So we rang the bell and finally our new nurse and new doctor came in and a new anesthesiologist because of a shift change. The doctor checked me and he's like, you're four centimeters dilated. This balloon is, should definitely be taken out. So it was a new doctor, like I said, they took the balloon out, four centimeters dilated. I'm like, great, we're getting somewhere. He's like, now we can use the drugs and get things like, really get things going. So I got really, really excited. Um, so this is around seven, eight o'clock at night, 7.38, probably more like eight, 8.30 actually, that the doctor came in and took the balloon out and 
the anesthesiologist also came in. Basically, I produce platelets, but only half of them are actually doing their job. Like only half of them are working. And so basically, obviously no epidural, no pain medication. The only thing I could get is fentanyl and it wears off quickly and then it doesn't, like it won't work for you again. Also, if I would have had to get a C-section um, that they would have had to put me under for it, be just the risk. They couldn't keep me awake. So that was that. So about 15 minutes later, our new nurse that was gonna stay in the room with us for the rest of our labor came in and started IV. So I had to get three IVs. I had one for my platelet transfusion that I did get. I had one for the oxytocin and to keep me hydrated. And then I had another, which was for fentanyl, should I choose to use it. So basically I was having contractions, things like my body was doing stuff, but they wanted to get the show on the road, obviously. So they started me on oxytocin. So this is probably nine o'clock, 9.30 that they started me on Pitocin. I got a platelet transfusion at the same time. I also got told that I wouldn't be able to move around much. They didn't have any portable monitors and because of being on oxytocin and my platelet levels, I had to be constantly monitored. So basically laying in a bed the whole time, I had no grip whatsoever because I had one IV here, I had two here. They had been taking blood from here constantly. So it was just not so much fun. The contractions, once the oxytocin started, were crazy and the nurse did warn me as she was getting me all set up and giving me IVs that it's going to make them extremely painful, it's going to make them extremely fast and it's not at all like a natural labor because obviously they're forcing, it's forcing your body to do something that's not ready to do yet um, and because you can't get anything, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot. Normally people who get induced, they highly suggest that they get the epidural by this time, like where I was at when they were starting the oxytocin. So she just said like, it's going to be rough, but like you can do it. So it was rough. I'm not going to lie. I'm not saying any of this to scare anybody or to make you not want to have a baby or like not want to try natural labor. I'm saying because I had an induced labor, it was crazy intense and crazy painful. <laughs> um, I definitely give so much credit to Bryce because he put up with me and never faltered, never stepped away, never got irritated. Like he just was so amazing during my labor. So I definitely am a very lucky girl to have a partner like him in my life, that's for sure. So things got really intense and um, around 11 o'clock, <clears throat> yeah, 11 o'clock, they were like, we're gonna check you and we're gonna break your water. So I got up and we went to the washroom, which was not as easy as I thought it would be, <laughs> but that was all right. Um, just walking was the hard part. But like I said, again, Bryce was amazing. I leaned on him the whole time and so made it through that. So we they checked me, I was five centimeters dilated, still 50% of phase though. They broke my water and definitely what I thought was intense before was nothing like what happens after your water got broken. And my contractions ended up becoming like only 30 seconds apart. I wasn't getting a break. Things were getting really intense. I was like begging somebody to knock me out. Like, you know, it was bad. Bryce was like, that's not part of our birth plan. And the nurse is like, you're not going to want to be knocked out. Like we can't do that. And if we did, like you'll really regret it. Like you can do this. You have to stay positive. And I was just like, I just can't do this. Like, I just can't do this. I can't do this. So at 12 15 p like a.m a different doctor came in to check me again and she said that i was still only five percent or five centimeters dilated and i lost all motivation you guys i seriously i just was like oh my god like i can't do this like this is so bad the pain was everywhere it didn't matter what position what i did pressure points nothing was helping and so um 
I really had a breakdown. I did. Um, I was crying and like I said, to asking to be knocked out. Like I couldn't do this anymore. And what I didn't hear during my breakdown was that I was actually 80% effaced. And if I would have heard that, I think I would have been able to stay in a good mindset. But because I felt like I was getting literally nowhere, I just like had a breakdown. I was having a rough time. So the nurse was like, let's get you up. Let's go to the bathroom. Like you can do this. So in the meantime of that, finally, the nurse kept asking and asking about me wanting fentanyl. Like this was during my breakdown. Do you want the fentanyl? Do you want the fentanyl? Do you want to try something? Should we do something? And I didn't want to give in, but Bryce was like, yes, she needs it. Like, let's give her something. So we got the fentanyl hooked up and started and it was great when I hit the button. Now, the thing about fentanyl, it does not take away the pain. It takes away that initial shock of every contraction that comes on so that I was able to regain my focus and breathe through them. They were still ouchy um, and they were still very close together and still sucked, but they, it took away that initial shock. However, it had a 10 minute time out. So when you push the button, it, indu or it gives you obviously the medication and you're supposed to push it when you feel a contraction coming on and then you don't get anything for 10 minutes. doesn't matter how many times you push that dang button. And I almost wish like going back that I, I was thankful that Bryce said yes and that I was, I just like was like, yeah. But at the same time, I kind of wish I wouldn't have given in because once you get that type of relief, like I felt like I could do this, you know, like it took away that initial shock. I mean, they were still super painful, but I could breathe through them. Like I could regain my focus. And I feel like once it stopped working, cause it only worked for 15 minutes for me. That is it. Like it didn't matter after that, how many times I pushed that damn button. They upped my dosage like quite a bit and it didn't matter. It wasn't doing anything anymore. So it just made it that much harder, I feel, to get through the contractions after getting that type of relief. And then you don't get it anymore because it does only last so long for so many for people. Like it depends on the person. So at one point during being hooked up to fentanyl, she's like, let's go to the washroom. When I stood up, I got sick. I threw up like a lot. And so she was like, well, I think we're going to get the doctor to come in and check you here. So I went to the bathroom. They put me on the, the birthing ball or exercise ball, whatever you want to call it. Hated that. That was awful. That made the contractions a million times worse for me. So I was like, fine. I sat on that ball for probably 20 minutes and the nurse was doing pressure points on my back. Bryce was doing pressure points on my hips. I was leaning into Bryce. I was feeling so tired, so exhausted. I just needed something to help me. The pain medication wasn't working anymore. This was the awful. I just like, finally, I was like, I have to stand up. I need to stand up, even if I can stand, but I couldn't really because my legs were really wobbly. So they're like, well, we'll get you back in bed. So she got me back in bed and she's like, and the doctor came in. And so this was around probably like 1 30, 1 45 ish AM. The doctor came in and he checked me and I was nine centimeters, nine and a half centimeters, a hundred percent of face. So it was only an hour, an hour and a half, not even that I went from a five, five centimeters dilated, 80% of phase to nine and a half centimeters dilated, a hundred percent of phase which does explain why it was so intense for me and why I wasn't getting a break. Um, but you know, at the time it sucks. So he's like, we're gonna give you a few more minutes. Um, and then I'll come in and I'll freeze you. So they were going to freeze my area for pushing because really what else could they do to help me? Um, and while we were waiting for him to come back, we lost the baby's heartbeat. So they got me up on my knees facing like the back of the bed. And that did help with contractions. However, as soon, like I don't think I was on my knees for not even a minute and I needed to push. And the nurse is like, you can't push. You're going to cause swelling. Like don't push, don't push, fight the urge, deep breaths. And Bryce is helping me breathe. And 
I was fighting my body so much not to push and I couldn't like I gave I could not not push and anyone who's get, like had labor naturally I feel like you totally understand where I'm coming from here like even if you haven't done it naturally I don't know I just feel like anyone who's felt that need to push you totally understand where I'm coming from when I say not pushing is nearly impossible like it's so hard to resist that urge to push so we got the baby's heart beat back and another nurse came in that was going to assist with the freezing in the birth and she's like maybe let's try the peanut ball like maybe that'll take away some of that pressure so she's not continuously pushing and giving in like okay so they got me on the peanut ball if you don't know what a peanut ball is it's just an exercise ball literally shaped like a peanut so got me on the peanut ball, laying on my left side, heartbeat's still good. And it did take away a lot of that pressure to push, but I still had that sensation, but I was able to kind of fight it more. So I was on the peanut ball like two minutes and the doctor came in and he's like, let's get your freezing started. So I got my, they got me off the peanut ball. I'm slowly rolling over as I'm going through contractions and I have my left foot in the stirrup and I'm swinging my right leg around and all I see is the doctor's eyes go from like normal to <gasps> he's like there's no time for freezing there's a head it's time to push like it's time and then everything got crazy like my contractions had always been super painful I literally from the time I got off the time I got sat on that birthing ball to the time he said push I don't feel like I got a break through my contractions at all like they were just coming and coming and coming and coming it'd be like one that wave would go down and another one was coming it just like I wasn't getting a break at all so um when he said it's time to push I was like heck yes let's push like I can do this so the room got really crazy because they weren't expecting that it was time to push. So they didn't have a lot of the stuff prepared. So there was code something. There was people coming in, people going out. All I know is I had Bryce here telling me I could do it. The doctor at the bottom telling me to push and my nurse telling me to hold my breath and they'll tell me when to breathe. And I pushed. And honestly, I got to tell you, pushing was the easiest part for me. Pushing was quick. I pushed three big pushes and three tiny ones just to get his shoulders out and he was born at 2 39 a.m so it was not hard i did feel the ring of fire but between the intense contractions and pains in my belly and the like hum of the room and everyone telling me i can do this i just pushed through it i you know i had to and yeah i made it he was so that's my birth story like it wasn't hard 2 39 a.m they laid him on my chest bawled my eyes out it was the most amazing experience ever to go through that and to go through that with Bryce and to meet our baby finally um it just isn't an experience and something you go through that you you can just never imagine what it's going to be like for you until you go through it like it's just amazing and you know as much as I say like it sucked I would go through labor that way a million times over like a million times over I'd do it again for our little angel so that is our birth story um I will have inserted pictures along here of the pictures Bryce took during labor and um both of us gained to hold him for the first time so that's that it literally he yeah the doctor came in he said he was in there at 2 20 he was born at 2 39 a.m so it was very very quick um the birthing ball peanut ball and being up on my knees really did speed things up so yeah and um as for tearing or anything i have a first degree tear other than that that's all that's it he's perfect it's perfect and that's my birth story it's not the way I planned my birth vlog being or my birth story being I planned things being so much different but you know what this is how it turned out and it's the way it is and I wouldn't take back that experience or the way it went at all ever 
So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a long time coming. It's been such a long wait. I know it's not what you guys expected. It's not what I planned, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up slash like button on your way out, which gives this video and my channel overall support, which is always needed, as well as for other people to watch this video if they feel. Um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, leave them down below or you can message me privately. All my information is down below on ways to message me privately. Um, if you wanna know more or more in-depth details about my birth, let me know and I can do a whole video that goes like really into depth and tells you guys like piece by piece by piece instead of just an overall story. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the bottom so you can just become part of my YouTube fam jam as well as I upload new videos once every week. And if you're subscribed, you just won't miss it because you'll get an alert as well as stay tuned because I have a lot more videos for you guys. So thank you so, so much for watching, for liking, everything.